Victory. Joining me now is the columnist and victim of sexual exploitation in Telford. It's Samantha Smith. Samantha, there are layers to this because, yeah, all right, OK, so they're potentially going to be deported. It doesn't look like they might launch an appeal to it now. But there's more to it than this that I want to unpack. Do you think that political correctness has got in the way of us preventing grooming gang scandals or indeed even prosecuting them properly? Well, if you listen to Rishi Sunak's recent interview with... Uh, with GB News, you'll know that that is absolutely the view that the government takes, the view that I take, and the view that many victims and survivors take. It's been stated in no uncertain terms that in in areas like Telford, Rotherham, Rochdale, Oldham, the uh, police, social services, local authorities, those in positions of power fail to act because of, quote unquote, nervousness against race and a desire to safeguard their own reputation rather than safeguard the innocent children that were being raped, exploited and abused. And the, the issue of, of, of these two men, is, you're right, is not just about two men being deported to Pakistan. This is about a far wider issue in the fact that our justice system seems to do more to protect the perpetrators and the paedophiles than to protect the victims of these crimes themselves. Why do you think that is? I think it's it's systemic. It goes back to decades, centuries even, of, of victim-blaming, silence and ignorance. You see it in all the major institutions in, in, in this country and, and globally. The recent report, the Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse, which also covered child sexual exploitation as well on a national scale, it, uh, it concluded its seven-year review. Coincidentally, the same period of time that these men had been appealing their, mm. their deportation on quote unquote human rights grounds, and it examined thousands upon thousands of instances of of organised, of family oriented, of white, Pakistani, mm. black abuse against children, sexual abuse, ex sexual exploitation against children. And the thing yeah. is, these are not crimes of the past. And I'll say this until the cows come home: these are not crimes of the past. Children are still being groomed, raped, Absolutely. and abused in towns and cities like mine across the country. And uh, frankly, uh, I, I would I would deplore any left wing activist that goes and stands in front of those planes and tries to stop them from leaving, because those men didn't care about the human rights of the little girls they raped, exploited, exploited and abused. Why should we give them the opportunity to appeal on human rights grounds when they so frankly disregarded mm. the rights of the little girls that they abused for so long? I can't help but yeah, wonder right. whether or not right there's a really tragic irony here, which is that people say, hey, look, we don't want to necessarily clamp down too hard just in case we, quote, stoke racial tensions. The implication there is that there might be some kind of racist backlash. From where I'm sitting, a lot of the victims appear to be working class, young, vulnerable white girls. And I would argue that there's an element of racism when it comes to that, an element when it comes to some of the grooming gangs that we've seen who've been predominantly of South Asian heritage, that young, vulnerable, working-class white girls are less of that. So anyone can be a victim of child sexual abuse or exploitation. I don't want to take away the experiences of any survivor, but it would be remiss to, to refuse to discuss the the prominent demographics of this type of crime, specifically group-based child sexual exploitation, mainly is perpetrated against white working class girls and is mainly perpetrated by South Asian Pakistani men. This is this is a clear as day. This is an irrefutable fact. And to completely ignore that, to whitewash it, to brush it over, only once again serves to protect the predators and the paedophiles. It's turning white working class girls into second class victims, suggesting that their pain and the abuse they suffered is not worthy of, of being relieved or being supported or being uh, brought to the justice system. It suggests that there's no point in even trying to come forward because nobody will care. And police, if the police can say it, I can I can say it on, on national TV. They called young victims of child sexual abuse pack shaggers. They called them white slags. They said that they were child prostitutes. When these are children, they have no, no ability to consent on their own. A child cannot consent. A child cannot be a prostitute. A child cannot be asking for it. A child is never at fault when it comes to sexual abuse. And for yeah. police, social services, local authorities to spend decades trying to gaslight victims into believing that yeah. they are to blame for their own abuse is beyond comprehension. And we're at the very beginning of this yeah. fight still. There is so much more to be done to bring light to this issue and to ensure that justice is truly done and children are, are protected in the yeah. future. Yeah, indeed. I just think it's worth saying, look, OK, obviously strong language there, but with potentially good reason on your part, apologies if anyone was offended by that, but just on, on your part, a bit of context, why do you feel so passionate about this issue? 
because I lived it. I, I was I was abused for nearly a decade by successive men. It, it started when I was five years old and didn't finish until I was a teenager. I don't, frankly, I, I don't care if, if those words offended people because if the police can say those to victims, yeah. people should be hearing about it on national TV. If I had to go through this, if thousands of other little girls had to go through this sort of abuse, go through this sort of victim blaming, this shame, and live with that for the rest of their lives, because trust me, the scars of abuse never go away. I can speak from, from my own experience. If we had to go through that, the least the public can do is open their ears and listen. Yeah. How do you feel about the idea now that it's Abdul Quarry Ralph, I believe? I mean, it makes me sick, let alone how it must make you feel. But was trying to say that he's got five children here and he wants to be a good role model to his kids and he doesn't want to go back to Pakistan. He's renounced his Pakistani citizenship. He doesn't want to go there and it will be against his human rights to send him. Let's just, it remains to be seen exactly what happens. Let's deal in the hypotheticals here is wife and five children, not sure how old they are now, but uh, stay here. And he goes back to Pakistan. Do you have any sympathy for his wife and children at all? I have sympathy for children, always, because the children aren't the ones who held down little girls, took, threw them in taxis and raped them on the side of the street. Those children are not to blame. And I don't know what, I'm not going to comment on his wife. She's, she's an adult. She deserves her own privacy. She's not been implicated in any crime. So it isn't my place to go into that. But when it comes to those children's father, just because you have children does not make you exempt from the law. He made the choice to betray his children, to, to willfully separate himself from his children when he went out and abused other ki children. Mm. If if anyone had done that to his five children, I assure you, he would be part of the angry mob de demanding that he was deported. Mm. Yeah, well, one hundred percent. Any any parent, any parent would one hundred percent demanding justice for for ah. harm done to their children, and it's no different. Just because he's a father does not make him exempt from. Well, I, I do find it remarkable when you see the way that some people in this country respond to the slightest elements of offence, and then you think, well, hang on a minute, I'm mm. very offended by what's taking place right across the United Kingdom, as far as I.